So with the pearl now safely above water, I think we should go ahead and make our way onto its deck and see if we can't find that E-99 bomb. Though it looks like we've attracted the attention of some Zex and obviously Demichev's men, and I think we're well equipped to take care of anything we might run into. Also off camera, I went ahead and picked up some more upgrades such as being able to carry more health packs and E99 files and something else I'll be showing off later. But to get on deck we just have to undo that chain. Captain, I must warn you that the DMD effect will not last long on an object as large as the freighter. It will sink a day. You need to get on that ship with the bomb as fast as you can. Well, I think we should make sure and pay attention to what Barisov has to say, and keep in mind that we are going to need to hurry just a tiny bit. But not before easily taking care of any Zex that might happen to accidentally get in the way of our bullets. Demichev's men are everywhere. Choppers are deploying soldiers onto the freighter. Be on the alert. Well, I think we can definitely keep an eye out for them. And he sunk it. All those people dead. Who sunk it? It's kind of hard to say right now. Welcome to the bridge, that's apparently whoa, under attack from Demichev's helicopters and quite a few sex. We'll just need to go ahead and get on out of here, because what we are going to need is going to be down in the hold of the ship, not up top. And here we can just get a general diagram of the overall look of the ship. As it continues to break down all around us. Let's go ahead and check out what this audio recording has. Personal log, November 22nd, 1955. We've taken possession of something Dr. Demichev called an E-99 bomb. I'm uncomfortable having this on my ship. It's unproven. Untested. The bomb is dangerous. I've told my officers to keep everyone away from the rear cargo bay. Hopefully the seas are calm on our return voyage. Well, it looks like that should have been the least of their concerns, considering that the Pearl didn't even make it out of the harbor. But what exactly caused the explosion? Well, we'll be finding that out as we continue through this degrading, rusting hulk of a ship. This note is just from one of the crew members wondering what the bomb looks like. The uh, E-99 bomb was pretty much a mystery to quite a few people. And by repairing that electrical box, we'll be able to continue on through the boat. But first, we do have another new weapon over here. The Death Hex Launcher, or Death... Deathlex, I'm not really certain how to pronounce it, is... Well, it's a grenade launcher. But it also has a very special secondary feature. Which allows us to control a grenade using the WASD keys, also using the spacebar to jump. 
It can be a bit odd to control, but you know, this all looks very familiar for some reason. It really seems like something we've done in another game, but can't really place it. Actually, I can place it. I was just being coy. This entire room is actually a really weirdly placed homage to Metroid. That particular note was talking about that odd species that you saw in the container there that for some reason kind of looked like a Metroid. And the note itself was signed by someone whose initials were S.A. Such as Samus Aran. Also the fact that we're using a glowing ball going through graded little areas, but enough of that. It's time to continue on through the ship and leave the Metroid behind. So we get to see more cross-faction fighting between the uh, the Zex and Demichev's men. And normally I wouldn't want to get in between cross-faction rivalries, but it's just to expedite our trip through the ship. Also, even though the the launcher isn't really one of my favorite weapons, I figured I would show it off a little bit more. If only to show off why it's not really my favorite weapon. Now, as you can see, you can actually see it and control it through the walls themselves, but the problem is that while you are controlling it and moving it around, you don't, you're not actually able to move around yourself, so it's either a case where you're not going to be able to see the enemy who you're going to have to kill, or you're going to have to stand out and cover, and either situation is not really that pleasant. That's not to say that you can't have some fun with it, it's just, it's a very gimmicky weapon. Graffiti on the wall, indicating for us to move slowly, means that, yep, you guessed it, it's time to deal with more reverts. But I'm not really in the mood for stealth, and we're kind of on a very noticeable time constraint here, so I think it might be a little bit more fun to deal with them in an aggressive manner. First, though, we have some captain's orders here telling us to stay, or telling the crew, I should say, stay away from the E-99 bomb and cargo bay, too. And so, I'm not exactly sure what happened with that first uh, little grenade, but I know what happened with this one. And that's just my excellent gameplay. And I am 
not really certain how I survived that, but uh, good for me. Thankfully, there is plenty of health pack or med kits around that we can heal ourselves back up, so it's not that big of a deal. That's just a note saying that um, the Pearl has apparently been taking a lot of trips out of the harbor, probably to Moscow, probably transporting some of that precious E-99 tech. And we can see kind of the overgrowth of Yes, E-99 mutated entities. Closer and closer we get down into the hold. Whoa. So we're really getting rocky here. Let's go ahead and check out what this audio recording has to say. Something tells me that Dimitrov probably didn't really know the extent to what this E-99 bomb could do. Finally, some helpful advice from the graffiti telling us the obvious, that we need to get out. The GPS has you in the cargo hold. Excellent. You shouldn't be far from the bomb now. Also, we're not too far away from what appears to be a very large head of uh, Demichev. And it actually holds a very nasty secret. Oh, great. More face sticks. Well, I could always assume that there was probably some creepy crawlies crawling around at Demichev's head. company come. We got this far away weapons tech. It's not too hard to spot, but it can be a bit easy to overlook. Стреляй в них! Нужно 
Поддержка! Нужно принятие! This note is just explaining that rather large head of Demichev has actually moved to the island to pretty much replace all of the Lenin statues with his head. He seemed to already be proclaiming that he would be the head of this new USSR. Also, I do apologize for the choppiness and frame rate here. It only lasts a couple more seconds, but just sometimes the game seems to want to start choking on itself and thankfully it doesn't last for too long. I think that should fix it. You want to be very careful coming up because there is a bit of a nasty ambush coming. Seriously, this is just way too many face ticks. Also, I'm just gonna leave our reverted friend up there to his own machinations, because we're actually not gonna have to deal with him. A simple puzzle to fix here. We just have to repair this electrical box and it'll make sure the water isn't electrocuted. Franco, the ship is reversing. It's starting to sink. There's no way he'll make it with all of Demichev's men there. Kimberly, stop! Where are you going? To the freighter. Franco, I'll be there in a minute and draw the soldiers' attention away from you. Well, not that we necessarily need any more distractions considering the ship going down the way it is, but more the merrier. The freighter is sinking and Dimitri's men have the cargo all surrounded. You're out of time, Captain! Not yet! Get the bomb, Renko! I'll hold them off long enough for you to escape! Thankfully the bomb is actually pretty close by, and the other upgrade that I bought off camera was Iron Lung. As you can see, we're not actually running low on oxygen at all. And can you guess where the bomb is? It's next to these very odd looking amoeba, or plant life I should say, anemone. It's time to get the hell out of this ship. Because now we're actually in a race against time, as the water level is going to start rising. And for some reason, it's going to be electrified, so we are going to start taking damage if we happen to stay on the water level, but ooh, bloop. It's not too good, it's not too bad, but we have better things to worry about. Now, as to how the E-99 bomb actually ended up opening up, well, maybe it got jostled, maybe someone got curious, but it ended up dooming this entire ship. But with that, let's proceed to get smacked in the face with a bunch of water, and... This will be the end of our update. See you next time.
Captain Renko, thank heavens you're all right. Here, let me help you. You did it. You got the E-99 bomb. We still have hope. 